tonight, do or die, judgment day for AMC. Construction worker falls to his death in Townsville. And thieves hit the jackpot on a pokies raid. This is Win News Late Edition. Good evening. Central Queensland is holding its breath as it awaits the future of Australian Magnesium Corporation's Stanwell project. Crisis talks were called in Sydney today, unveiling all stakeholders, that is involving all stakeholders, in the ailing $1.7 billion project. An announcement could come as early as tomorrow. The activity at AMC's Stanwell plant today belied the acute uncertainty that surrounds the ambitious project. The company's suspension of trading yesterday doesn't necessarily sound the death knell for the magnesium plant, but given the tumultuous last few weeks, it certainly left a sick feeling in the stomachs of a lot of central Queensland investors. And no doubt the state government too, which kicked in $150 million to get it off the ground. Parliament was in uproar today as a coalition accused the Premier of being reckless with taxpayer dollars. Peter Beattie crying sabotage. If this project goes down, you will wear some of the responsibility. Don't be the village idiot. Don't be the village idiot. I don't mind it most days, but this is about the future of the state. Also on the line, the savings of 23,000 mum and dad investors who've pumped in $500 million in shares. But AMC management isn't in danger of ending up on the breadline regardless of the plant's future. They paid themselves $5.8 million last financial year, one executive director pocketing a cool $1.8 million. Crisis talks were staged in Sydney today involving all Stanwell stakeholders, reportedly a bid to stave off calling in voluntary administrators. The hurdles that have to be overcome, a $200 million cost blowout and the need for a new equity partner with deep pockets. Economists divided on whether it will go ahead. Some say if it doesn't, it won't be because it's not an excellent investment. It's a reflection of the short-sightedness of the investment markets. It's a reflection of the, perhaps even the short-sightedness of investors. An announcement on the project's future is expected to come tomorrow at the earliest. Sue Gardner, WE News. A 27-year-old man has died after falling 20 metres from the roof of the bulk sugar shed at Townsville's port. It's the third accident to occur this year. Workplace Health and Safety has launched a full-scale investigation. At 11.30 this morning, 27-year-old Troy Leonard Body fell more than 20 metres to his death from the roof of Townsville's new sugar shed, investigations immediately focusing on safety. We believe at this stage that he had a, he was wearing a harness, but however we do, know, do not know what caused the harness to become undone. It's alleged the Lolo construction worker was welding at the time, but police say no one witnessed his fall. The sugar terminal worksite shut down this afternoon. Construction workers instructed by management to go home after the accident. The Australian Workers' Union says the death should never have happened. Several employees devastated by the tragedy. I was just told the company and got some counsellors in for the people that were close to it and witnessed whatever happened. It's the third accident to occur on the construction site this year. A union representative who didn't wish to be named says uniform safety procedures have been an ongoing issue. Workplace Health and Safety have launched an investigation. Work on the sugar terminal is set to resume tomorrow. Yvette Colgrave, Win News. Fifteen people have been charged with more than 60 drug-related offences after a joint operation involving Toowoomba detectives and the State Drug Investigation Group. Police say the arrests are a major success against local drug trafficking. Detectives have recovered several thousand dollars cash and some property from the operation which began early this year. The investigation's been ongoing here for some months and it resulted last night in arrests of persons here and also in Brisbane. They'll face various charges relating to trafficking and possession of a dangerous drug. Police say the arrests mark a considerable step forward. I think it's been a substantial uh, investigation that's uh, obviously uh, put a dent in the uh, crime and drug trafficking uh, and drug use here in Toowoomba. Meantime, a 62-year-old Darling Downs man is facing sexual assault charges. He's been charged with uh, five offences of rape and six of indecent treatment of a child. Uh, the offences have occurred over a two-year period and the child uh, was four years of age at the time. The and detectives have recovered property including jewellery and DVDs, allegedly stolen from a residence in Rosewood Street. 
two juveniles will uh, face court in relation to the burglary and stolen motor vehicle charges. Kylie Barron, We News. Groups of substance abusing youths are targeting elderly residents at a Townsville retirement village in a series of unprovoked attacks. Kerwin police have stepped up security as of today, but the Townsville City Council fears the Heatley area is rapidly plummeting into ghetto status. Residents at St James Retirement Village are too afraid to speak out in fear of being victimised by gangs of youths targeting the vulnerable. Well, there's been a car stolen here, there's been windows of cars smashed, they urinate on, on, on motor vehicles. The mounting wave of attacks started over 12 months ago at the retirement units next to Fulham Park. But in the past three months, crime has escalated to St James. Councillor Dale Parker says the 150 residents are living in fear, locking themselves inside their homes just after dusk. Just last week, three units were broken into. It's reported youth searched the retirement village for back doors left unlocked. They're 8, 10, up to 17 years of age. Who owns them? They must have parents, they must have homes. We believe it's a small group of uh, substance abuse sniffers or the living around the area. Cohen police say the full force of the law will come down on juvenile offenders caught harassing the elderly. Today launching a permanent liaison officer specifically for St James Retirement Village in a bid to step up security. Uh, we've also uh, targeted uh, aggressive patrols around both uh, in motor, motorised patrols and also on foot throughout the uh, complex. Elderly residents say they want iron bars on the windows of their homes, but Councillor Parker says it shouldn't have to come to that, fearing if the crime wave isn't stopped, Heatley will turn into a ghetto. Yvette Colgrave, Win News. A profitable evening for thieves overnight, with several Noosa businesses broken into. The Yandina Bowls Club also targeted offenders taking off with almost $1,000. Thieves were in and out in 16 minutes at 4.04 this morning. The alarm was activated. At 4.20, security arrived, the offenders and money gone. The popular target, pokey machines. Jimmy Open, the cash and its tray taken. Scenes of crime this morning dusting the club over. Police investigating a possible link with last week's break-in at the Horton Park Golf Course. In just three minutes there, thieves ransacked five pokey machines, also in the early hours of Wednesday. In both cases the offenders knew exactly what they were doing. Meantime Noosa Junction shop owners were picking up the pieces after several stores were targeted. So when I arrived uh, at the school I found the police already here and um, two rooms had been entered by way of the roof, smashed through into the rooms through the ceiling. From an English college to carpet giant Solomons, the offenders didn't discriminate. But they then did rifle through desks and veranda, uh, desks and books to see if, uh, if there was anything else. Police are still investigating. Anyone with information about any of the break-ins is urged to call Crime Stoppers. Simone Hetherington, Win News. Far Northern leaders are tonight in Canberra pleading with the Federal Environment Minister to change proposed reef green zone plans. Warren Ench and Cairns Mayor Kevin Byrne hoping to receive a sympathetic ear before the plans are finalised. When the latest Green Zone draft was released on Monday, Kevin Byrne and Warren Ench made their views on the plan very clear, both conveying the fears of a shell-shocked fishing public that the planned no-go zone spelt disaster for the industry. My initial take on the situation with the RAP program was one of horror. Mayor Byrne met with Warren Ench in Canberra late this afternoon to discuss Far Northern concerns over the plan. Mr Ench to meet with Environment Minister David Kemp later tonight when he hopes to receive a sympathetic ear. The Minister's already indicated if there, are in, if there are unintended consequences there, he's certainly uh, open to have a look at it. It is, it is very clearly a draft. But most in the fishing industry aren't remaining as confident, with the plan affecting the entire sector from commercial operators to recreational anglers. They say too much is at stake. Mr Ench believes those at Grumper devising the plan should have reconsulted peak bodies before the draft's release. If they'd have done that, I think, we may well have been able to iron out a lot of these wrinkles prior to it becoming public. The final public consultation phase in the far north will begin next week with a meeting at the Cairns Coral Society on June 10. Public submissions on the plan close on August 4. Sonia Campbell, Win News. Next up, Telstra logs into some new service reforms. We'll tell you all about it on Win And going bananas in Townsville.
Welcome back to the late edition. We're being promised better coverage and faster internet access under new plans launched by Telstra. The company saying it's all about improving service. There's a regional spin to Telstra Talks today and it all sounds positive for residents. The telecommunication giant unveiling its country internet and phone plans. The catch cries coverage, access and speed. The big issue for some of the people in the regions is the distance they are from the exchange as to their, their, the availability of the service for them. This will certainly allow a lot more people to have access to a, you know, to a far, far higher grade of service. Call prices set to tumble to new levels, altered offers labelled a win for phone users. The big hero price point for us is the new $1.49 for the first 20 minutes of a call, uh, any time. The region's internet users not forgotten. Telstra Countrywide saying it will now offer broadband options with a big pond ISDN. The new network means quicker access with the ability for users to be online 24 hours a day. Access to the internet uh, has become vitally important. Um, we, we introduced the local call charge for that. The fact that we've now got a broadband option for customers that aren't in you know, major uh, urban centres I think is a, is a massive bonus. Improved coverage for mobile phone users also promised. Telstra saying teams are working to implement 132 extra base stations to eliminate as many black spots as possible. A nationwide banana conference has heard the black Sigatoga outbreak has made the industry more vigilant to preventing disease spreading in the future. Growers are now attempting to lobby the government to finalise an agreement preventing imports from the Philippines, which they say would expose the industry to outbreaks far greater than anything witnessed before. When black cigatoka gripped the banana industry in 2000, many predicted years of slipping profits and demand. Three years on and this field day aims to show the buoyancy of the market, with 350 delegates from across the country converging on the north. Exhibitors keen to show off the latest in the industry, while representatives want to portray the message of lessons learnt through past mistakes. Industry has learnt so much over the last couple of years. We were ever vigilant before, but more so now, and uh, because of the commitment of the industry, uh, we will be ever vigilant in the future. But this doesn't make the industry immune to disease. The Banana Council applauding a draft ruling to keep imports from the Philippines out of Australia, but it's still waiting final approval, claiming if the decision isn't upheld, it opens a Pandora's box to disease in this country. Imports is not a worry to us, it's just the pest and disease quarantine. We spend so much money keeping these pests out, we don't want them here. The conference runs until Saturday. David Christopher-Lee, Win News. For some of us, they're a favourite fishing spot, while for others, they're nothing but a breeding ground for mosquitoes. Tonight, wildlife expert John Young heads into the salt water to inspect the creatures of the mighty mangrove. G'day, John Young here for Wind Television. Tonight, we go down to the mangroves where we take a look at the Apelli's jewel larvae that's actually being looked after by ants. Mangroves can be inhospitable places, mosquitoes and sandflies, etc. But if you look close at the leaves, in many locations, you'll find life. Commonly in the tropics, the bright red Apelli's jewel butterfly can be found, and wherever you find adults, you'll find leaves with feeding marks by the caterpillars all over them. The interesting thing is that all jewel butterfly caterpillars are cared for constantly by small ants. You may say, what a strange thing, but when you look close, the ants spend much of their time on the back of the caterpillar, simply because in return for protection from parasites and wasps, the caterpillar produces a sugar solution from a gland on its back. The ants find this very tasty and vigorously protected from predators. Next Wednesday night, we're going to go to the mountains in northeastern New South Wales, where we take a look for the powerful owl. So till then, remember, Look after our wildlife. It's a natural thing to do. I'll catch you all next week somewhere in the Alps. See you then. Checking finance news now and investors with a healthy appetite for banking stocks helped push the Australian Stock Exchange to a marginally higher close. Rinker Group gained 16. Land Lease jumped 24. VentraCore rose 15 to close at 137. Westpac closed 21 higher. The All Ords Index finished the day four points stronger. The party's over for the CQ Comets as the coach puts tough bands on his players and the Cowboys rope in a new recruit.
Welcome back. You're watching Win Local News and the Cowboys have secured their first major signing for next season with Bulldogs utility Travis Norton signing for three years. The club will now turn its attention to retaining several current players off contract at the end of the season. It's only the start of June and the Origin Series hasn't even kicked off yet, but the silly season has well and truly begun. The Cowboys today snaring the signature of Bulldogs utility Travis Norton for the next three seasons. With Braith and Astor, Brent Sherwin and Jonathan Thurston taking up the ball playing duties at Belmore, the Bulldogs gave Norton permission to negotiate a couple of weeks ago, fulfilling the Cowboys' desire of finding an experienced half. We're adding him to this team that we've already got here and we'd like to think when he's not taking place of anyone, you're going to make him make it even stronger next year. While he spent most of his time at the Dogs in the Lockford position, Murray expects Norton to play a large amount of his time at 5 when he arrives next season. Given the highest possible recommendation by his former strength and conditioning coach Billy Johnston, Norton appears set to add to his two state of origin appearances before a minor leg injury last weekend crueled his selection chances. I know Wayne Bennett has a huge opinion of him and uh, last year's origin games, he, um, uh, I know Wayne spoke to Billy Johnson about how he didn't realise how good he was. The Cowboys will now turn their attention to retaining the large number of players currently at the club coming off contract at the end of this season. Mark Ryan, Win News. The Australian Etchells Winter Series has, has wind in its sails, that is, excuse me, it's getting late, following today's celebrity launch. The likes of Justin Kane and Christy Munro matching up against America's Cup hero, John Bertrand. Two sporting heroes from a more different backgrounds, boxer Justin Kane and yachtsman John Bertrand, talking tactics with an enthusiastic squad from Sailability. Today's launch of the Winter Nationals, a rewarding day for the handicapped sailing group. Just look at these uh, young fellows' faces as they're sitting on this boat. Um, you know, it, it's, it really is tremendous. Formalities aside, Sunshine Coast Sports Star of the Year Christy Munro was made to walk the plank in the Celebrity Challenge, the Iron Woman enjoying her off-season. They sail once a week and they're really competitive and um, not so much that, but they just enjoy getting out there. Um, you know, they're all great friends and I think they have a really good time with it. Munro's challenged teammates with varying reasons for their involvement in the sport. Remember those little ten-foot boats? They're good. Yeah. I just have to watch for the wharf <laughs> when you come in. I like getting competitive and having races with my friends, see who wins. Um, I don't like getting wet, so I try to keep the boat as stable as possible. Bertram has steered Australia to his fair share of victories, but was just as inspired by today's tact. Yeah, I just love how happy the people are and just how these kids love the sailing, and it's just a wonderful coming together of Mother Nature and, and, and people. The elite will register and weigh in tomorrow. Racing begins Friday. Where were you the day that Australia first won the America's Cup? Not born. Sorry, I'm surrounded by youngsters. Still on Rugby League and the coach of the Cowboys feeder squad, the Central Queensland Comets coach, has set an ultimatum to his players, either shape up or ship out. Part of the drastic measures include a ban on alcohol, late night socialising after games and the threat of a fine system for tardy attendance at training. It was a dream start to the season, knocking off Manly, notching their first win against NRL competition. But since then, the Central Comets have slipped down the Queensland ladder like a greasy pole, sitting third last. Saturday's 52-10 loss to the Young Guns, the catalyst for change. They've just all been told that that's not going to be accepted anymore and, you know, um, if they don't like it, then uh, they don't have to be at our club. From this week, alcohol will be banned, as well as late nights after games. And fines could be introduced if players turn up late to training. The boys have agreed to that, so it's 11 weeks of their, their uh, careers to try and turn something around and put a little bit of pride back into the Comets jumper. The coach could foresee no other alternative. The poor performances putting his own job on the line. I'm committed to um, the whole season and, um, you know, and the future of the, the club we need to build. You know, it's, it's, it's something that's been there for five years and something that we're fighting and that, uh, and that we're going to turn around. This week's game against the competition leaders Tweed Heads seen as a rebirth to season 2003. But with Craig Kamali injured and 10 out with representative football, this won't be easy. Enter Ryan Cullen, signed as part of the solution. Hopefully I can make a mark here and get sorted by an NRL club and go from there. The 20-year-old, formerly of Rockhampton, has done his apprenticeship with St George Illawarra. 
he'll slip into fullback against the Seagulls. Ryan Van Harlan, Win News. Oh, our weather watcher, Pete Byrne. He was around when the America's Cup was won. He's got everything you need to know about the weather next on Win. And then something's in the air at Raglan. Good evening, weather watchers. Righto, let's have a little uh, chart discussion. Here we are, a most uncharacteristic uh, weather map given the time of year, what the first week in winter. Weak pressure system, so most of Queensland is dominated by light winds, but probably the most noteworthy feature is the overnight minimums. In most centres over through eastern Queensland, at least five to eight degrees above the June average, some extremes of 10 to 12 degrees above what they should be. Absolutely um, unreal, isn't it? Very, very unusual. But basically, this is um, quite a deep low. Someone forgot to put the L down here. But that's moving very slowly east-southeast. And this front here, we did expect it to move off the coast during Friday. It looks like that will now be delayed till Saturday. It'll come through as a dry change only. Only following the passage of that front will temperatures drop significantly. So that's not before late Friday, early Saturday. The upper level trough has now moved off the southeastern Queensland, so it should uh, see a return to fine weather right throughout the region tomorrow. Through the remaining East Queensland districts, isolated showers at best, except for the Townsville district. Looks like remaining quite fine there. Also, in addition to that, fairly extensive low cloud shrouding the ranges tomorrow morning and probably extensive areas of fog or mist, probably clearing by about 8 or 8.30 at the latest. Let's move on. Tomorrow's Thursday. There's all the forecasts minima and maxima. Cairns 20 to 28, Emerald 15 to 27, Bundy 17 to 25. Paul, it's all yours. Peter, that L wasn't there on that weather map because uh, they borrowed it because there's a hen's night going on this evening and they needed a big L for the bride, so the future bride. So Nicola's getting a hen's night party this evening. That L is with her. And they're up watching this, I believe, Pete, so hello team. Preparations are almost complete for the 12th annual air show in Raglan this Sunday. A crowd of 3,000 will hopefully keep their eye on the sky as dozens of various aircraft take centre stage. From the roulettes to the smoking stunt planes, the tail dragging yaks to the age old warbirds. This is one place where the view is much better from the ground. And this weekend at Raglan, they'll do it for the 12th year in front of an expected crowd of 3,000. We have aircraft fly in from all over Australia. We've had them from Perth, Tasmania, and a lot of the locals as well. But the entertainment is not just restricted to the airfields on Sunday. Saturday night's Bullarama expected to bring in a local or two. And then there's the chance for the spectator to become the spectacle. We have joy flights. They're operating on both the Saturday and the Sunday. That's everything from just uh, your normal light aircraft uh, through to uh, joy flights in uh, warbird type aircraft. All proceeds will go to the Capricorn Helicopter Rescue Service. Peter Stefanovic, Wind News. And that is it from all of us here at Wind's Late Edition. Good night. This has been a Wind News presentation from Australia's largest regional television network.